Hello there, fellow humans, and welcome to another shop review. Let's see if there's anything in the shop that is worth purchasing. Now, obviously, the season's still ongoing, so play it. And there is the Mad Arena, where you can get this thing, which I find to be a quite pointless vehicle, and the only thing it actually does is make people racist. Play the event, you have to earn Mastery Badges in Tier 4 to Tier 10, and... Uh, if you collect these points here, you can get the vehicle at the end. Basically, you have to collect this eight times. You collect these two plates, and then you can get the vehicle right here. It's not really a vehicle that you have to have, and you're going to play it like three times and then realize that it's quite pointless. Or you're really going to enjoy it. Who knows? Uh, but generally, it isn't really a, a worthwhile vehicle in the most part. Now, the problem is, this is a terrible draw. Why does it stop, stop going through the Alpha Prayer draw? Ignore that. The problem is... This vehicle, the 121 GFT, is a excellent tank destroyer. Like, this is one of the, probably the best tier 8 uh, tank destroyer in the game. And if you have this one, you don't really need any of the others. The problem is Wargaming knows that. And they're only going to sell them in terrible offers like a draw right here. And obviously, if you look at the price here, 16 levels. It's going to add up to somewhere like 15,000 gold. Not really a good purchase here. However, if you really want the vehicle... Like, this is one of the very few vehicles where I actually find it somewhat defensible if you hate your own money. But it's a great tank. But again, the offer in the draw is absolutely awful. But Wargaming knows that it's a good tank, so they're not going to sell it for any good prices, like, ever. So there is that. Then we go to the regular offers. I'm just going to skip all through all the crates. I mean, yes, the Vipera exists and the... I wouldn't recommend it because it's in crates, so just ignore that for the meanwhile. It's an okay tank, it can play quite well, but ignore it in the crates. Then we have the T95E6, well, I'll go into that in detail a little bit later. Um, but it's an okay uh, bundle right here now. The time survives are locked, and there isn't really any like gold or premium time in here. There's just pointless containers, which kind of sucks. 22,000 here. So many, so many gambling, like so much gambling, this is just sad. That is just sad, like you would love to see some premium time or something actually useful in here rather than crates, but that's how it goes. It is a solid tank. If you're a very advanced player and you enjoy the heaviums um, and you have the 260 but hate playing it, then this is probably the good alternative to have the same playstyle but have a much better tank. Then, uh, I mean, they're fun. The M41D was given away for free quite a couple of uh, months ago or years ago at this point. So I think this one was given away for free at some point as well. So there's like, eh, don't buy this. There's no point. Like, they're great for free, but they're not worth anything outside of that. And uh, same with this one. I mean, the M4190, it's a fun little tank, but in terms of grinding creds, there has no use at all. Um, but uh, 7, it's 7.5. This is hilarious. Like, this is hilarious pricing right here. Like, you have 7.5k for the vehicle here. And only equipment. And then for 1,000 gold more, ladies and gentlemen, you can get a Scorpion G, a worthless crate. You can 25 unlocked times five, which is amazing. And then these 25 times boosters right here for 1,000 gold more. And this is what I mean with bad shop offers. This is a terrible offer when you compare it to something like this. Now, if you want the Scorpion G, absolutely. This is an amazing bundle for this vehicle right here. I mean, a lot of tier 8s are sold just tank and equipment for 8.5k. So having the Scorpion in here, obviously it includes this worthless crate in the Avatar. And they don't have any value, but it has the boosters in here that are going to add about a, another annual thousand gold. And most importantly, the times fives are unlocked, which is amazing. So if you want the Scorpion G, this is the thing. This is the bundle. It is amazing. Get it, right? Maybe I'll play that later as well. Together with the T95. So we got the Steel Monsters here. Still a great bundle. Can recommend it. Watch the previous shop reviews if you want to know more about these. Basically, both of them are very good heavy tanks that I can highly recommend. They're good for grand creds and they also perform very well. So if you're looking for creds, if you're looking for good heavies, this is the bundle, right? This is the bundle right here. This isn't. Stay away from that. See, here's the thing about Wargaming. They know how to sell great bundles. They, sell, they know how to sell great bundles, but they choose not to. Right, they choose to sell this. Why? Because it makes them a lot more money. So, that's why I, when I do the shop reviews, I look for the absolute best bundles. And not just the, uh, okay bundles. That's about, uh, okay. 6.5k. Two uh, tier 7s uh, with 
not really anything besides camos and times fives that are locked. Regular value of a, of a tier seven is going to be somewhere around 3k, right? That's wargaming. That's the lowest wargaming sells them, so that's going to be what their value is. Um, but yeah, we've got equipment here. So the value of the bundle here is pretty solid, but the tanks are vehicles you don't need. Uh, Kunze Pants was also a free tank time ago, and the E25, while it is fun, it's somewhat pointless after a while. So I don't personally recommend this, just like I don't recommend the Invincible Dragons, and I don't recommend the 907 either. Like, if you get one of the vehicles here, um, the T95 is a much better option than the 907. And then down here, obviously, with the camos, they're a waste of money. And, uh, do you want an I6? No? Good, because you don't, you don't want an I6. Nobody does. And then, obviously, here we have things like short future lockboxes, which... I find hilarious because this vehicle was sold for like 15,000 gold a couple of months ago. So putting them in crates again is just pure greed and nothing else. And that's exactly what this is as well. Pure greed. Do not buy the crates. This vehicle will eventually be in the shop for a reasonable price. And if you really have to satisfy your tank destroyer desire, go for the Scorpion G or go for this one right here. But be aware, you have to play it all the way until the end to actually get the vehicle. So it is going to be somewhat expensive. The other prizes in here aren't really worth anything. So you're going to overpay for this vehicle. But it is a great tank nonetheless. Alright, let's have a look at the Scorpion G first. I already made the T95 battle, but anyway. Let's have a look at this thing. Because the WS 120 is the prime to rate tank destroyer right that's the one you've got to have this one is one that you can have now it is a panther hull with no armor whatsoever which means you're gonna have to play this thing from the back lines or you should i don't um most of the time i play the grill at the front lines because i'm weird but this thing is best kept at the back of the map it does have a fully traversing turret which is an advantage over the su 130 uh, but obviously it is a lot taller, which means the camo rating is going to be worse on this vehicle. So hiding is going to be pretty difficult. Obviously, the second you go anywhere, you are going to get penetrated. But it is relatively quick enough to go places that you want it to. Um, but obviously, the second you actually expose this vehicle, you are going to get penetrated. And uh, now we have a problem because our light tank, which is a T92, which would be extremely useful at this side of the map against the MX-30 Proto, is incompetent at this game. Which is lovely, and there's the enemy T92. I'm gonna have to get out of here. Um, you can you can clearly see that this guy doesn't have a clue. Like if you're a light tank and you brawl with with heavy tanks, you just have don't have, don't have an idea. Especially if you brawl from the front, right? If you went around the outside and like attacked T30 or whatever from the side, sure, that's a fair game. But if you try to dive headfirst into heavy tanks, you're just a bad player. So in that specific game at least because remember just because someone does a stupid decision in one game doesn't mean they make that this stupid decision every game uh keep that in mind I'm, i have to say that because i make stupid decisions all the time so let's see like i am doing right now making a very stupid decision peeking head first into heavy tanks um okay now what i want to do here though is gonna go around the outside because the t92 can't do that he's too stupid so i'm gonna have to do that um, yeah, no, 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 T30. We're not, we're not playing that game because he can kill me with his AG rounds. So I'm going to get out of here. Uh, the MX-30 is not likely to actually chase me here. So I'm just going to go around the back. I could put an HE into the rear of the T30. So that's going to be my next objective here. Um, the game should be in the back because obviously the enemy is here. Played it quite badly. Um, so let's see. There we go. Alien on Blitz. Oh, we have extraterrestrial help. Not bad. Let's see. But now, um, hold on. I'm gonna change my approach here because you don't want to directly approach the enemy ever. Like, Blitz maps are quite small, but just move around, goddammit. Move around. Use the map to your advantage. You have seven minutes. You don't have to just run, rush head first onto the enemy. You don't have to do that. Nobody forces you to. So, see? Like that. Now I'm on his side, and I can shoot him in the side if I was still where I was over there, I would have to face his front. So, much advantage right here. And if you understand enemy movement, you'll be able to outflank them quite easily. So, not bad. And you can do that with a Scorpion G. Like, I'm playing very actively here. Right? Like, I'm moving around the battlefield. And that is what this thing can do quite well. 
um, if you know where to go and what places to avoid. Um, that's what I mean. Uh, but obviously, if you can't do that, don't recommend picking up the vehicle. And uh, that's about the Scorpion G. It's a great bundle. And if you can do this playstyle very well, or if you want to learn it, Scorpion G is an excellent choice. But remember, if you are a average to below average player, this might not be an ideal choice because it is pretty difficult to play. All right, here we go with the T95 E6. And the worst thing one can do with this vehicle is actually go to the heavy side because this thing is not made for brawling with other heavy tanks. This thing is made to hunt mediums, to flank around the map, to play the fringes of the map because it doesn't have any armor, but it does have some mobility and a relatively decent gun, which means that you're always going to have to be on the move Finding your targets without the target finding you, that is going to be very important. Now, unfortunately, that AMX is incredibly bad in this current battle. So we're going to have to adjust the strategy a little bit here. And now the uh, Sheridan is also abandoning reason, um, which is a bit sad. Okay, here's the I-7, here's the enemy. Yeah, that's exactly the problem, right? Map control is very important. Map control is everything. So the enemy has a clear advantage here already. Um, simply because our mediums decided to not medium very well. Um, and that's quite bad. Now, obviously, I'm going to be right in the window where the enemies are going to push into. As I want to get out of here as, as fast as I can. Um, just so that I don't get shot at and my teammates get shot at instead. Right? Because if you play the city side, you deserve to get shot at. So let's try to make that happen. Um, let's see. It's going to have to obviously get away from here. But you're still going to be extremely annoying. And we're going to have to go all the way around here. Uh, the Object 752. He tried his sort of best, uh, but he's just dead now. Uh, the enemy Kennedy one's probably going to go down. So we are going to have to be somewhat careful. Right? The worst thing you can also do, if the enemy's pushing you, is just try to like stop them. Right? Because their momentum is just going to crash straight into you and you're going to die. So when the enemy is pushing you, just go around the outside, attack them from a different angle. It's going to work much better than trying to jump into them head first. Probably most of the time going to result in you dying. Right? You always want to be in the place where the enemy doesn't point their gun. So, in this case, the enemies are turning around, which is the exact wrong thing to do here. Like, they should have just kept pushing through. Um, and now they're turning around. And uh, we sort of have the momentum here, but... Um, obviously, there is uh, going to be quite a big problem still, because we're down one tank. The yaw is low. Let's try and take that out. It's a good shot that we can take here. There's a tank destroyer down there to be wary of and now we should be able to take a shot at this guy he's aiming at me but i'm not really inconvenienced by that because i'm just going to peek very quickly it's one thing to do with this vehicle it can accelerate quite fast you can't can take peaks quick and you have to because if you expose this thing for more than you need to you're gonna get arrested or in the blitz cases you're gonna get shot at and you don't want that to happen the capole on this vehicle is massive it has the mobility to get out and to play different positions, so that is what you want to do here. It's also not a tank that you get when you're a beginner or when you're in the early stages of your Blitz career. This is an advanced players only tank right here. Um, but yeah, this thing lives off its ability to reposition and bring this gun on target from all sorts of different angles. Alright, now I should be able to get the object here if he peeks up a little bit higher. Nope, but the Minotaur is so low that I can just shoot down into his uh, turret, even though that still didn't go through. The Minotaur's armor is entirely too ridiculous. I'm just going to shoot him right next to the gun. Because it's sort of angles away, um, so it's easy to shoot him right next to the gun. And now he's going to try to push up, but I have a VK90 there, so all I'm going to have to do is track this guy if I can aim, which I still can't after 10 years of playing this game. I still can't aim. I'm gonna die. Alright, he misses. Gonna dance the tango here. Gonna... Am I stupid? Okay, let's see. He's out of should be out of shells now. There we go. And that's that. It's a solid tank. It can be purchased. But I only recommend it to really advanced players. Right, because otherwise, if you can't aim like me. This is going to be a little bit of a problem, you know, but it works, as you can see. So with that said, thank you very much for watching, and see you for the next one.